Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Bakaz, and Mori Midday, and Yahoo, and Yashrael. I want to welcome you to another live edition of My Living Branch. So today, we're, we're, we're still on that vein uh, where the Father's waking me up and giving me specific messages for, I don't know whether it's for specific groups, uh, specific people, all I do is deliver the message. So, this one this morning, uh, and I'll get more. I'll, I'll tell you about it. Let's pray and then we'll get started. Because there, there's some things we definitely have to see. Uh, some patterns. And if we don't address these patterns in our lives, we'll end up with another seed in us. And our objective is not to have the other seed or to have a, here, here's the quote uh, that you need to see, a mixture of seeds. That's what the father hates. He don't want you mixing his seed with another seed. But that tends to be what happens. All right. Hey, and we say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. We see you logging in. We appreciate it. Um. All of our misbacabo far and near. So let's grab up. I already got the frankincense and Murray incense burning. I just you know since I do this in my prayer room now, I like to uh, have those burning. I always want to make sure that it's not me. But I want the Father to speak through me. As we pray, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Lahina Malak HaAlam. Father, we say Toda Rabbah for another Shabbat. And we appreciate you for all that you are showing us and all that you shall reveal. We ask your Father to continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, memory, fear of Elohim. All the things that we need. To make it into the kingdom. Father. We just ask your forgiveness for our sins. Our transgressions. Our iniquity. We acknowledge the sins of our forefathers. We accept Father the punishment. That has been dealt to us. According to Deuteronomy 28. Father we don't refute it. We know. Um, that this was prophesied. That this would happen. So, Father, we are in full agreements with our punishment. We're just asking you, Father, restore us as your children and to restore the covenant of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov unto us so that, Father, we can be a delight and bring esteem back to the name that we polluted. Father, we say, Toda Rabbah, hallelujah, for this lesson today in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right. And the title of this lesson is Why Are You Still Wandering? Or for some of us, why are you still walking around in circles? Why are you still in the wilderness? You know, why haven't you received the promise yet? These are questions we got to ask ourselves. You know, why do you keep seeing the same old cycles in your life, the same toil, the same uh, obstacles? It's because you remain the same. You have not changed, nor have you grown any so that you can come out of that cycle. So you keep passing by that big old rock and that big tree. Every cycle, you like, I've seen this tree before. I've seen this rock before. Man, this, this looks so familiar. We, we got to break the cycle. So this is what the Father has given me to show. I don't know who you are, where you are, what you've been doing. I'm just delivering what he woke me up this morning to tell me. So let this is a lesson. Let me explain where this lesson comes from. So I woke up out of a dream which I don't remember. 
But I heard the father say, answer their question. Why are you, why am I still wandering? So when I heard him say that, I got up out my bed at 3 a.m. in the morning. So this lesson will address why we continue to get the same unfruitful results and why you have not progressed in your spiritual journey but continue to wander in the wilderness. In your mind, you see that the same subjects, the same situations and behaviors continue to dominate your life. This is the answer to why, to the why question in your mind so this is what the father gave me instruction to address so i being obedient servant not worried about repercussions or who's going to talk about it or who's going to say what or who's going to say that ain't me it does I, i'm just delivering what he gave me this morning okay so let's start with the spirit of cain because this right here, and notice I didn't even go back to the garden incident, you know, because we've been over that so many times. You should know that like the back of your hand. So we're going to start right here because this is where we're seeing the glitch. Genesis 4, chapter 4, verse 9. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? He said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thy tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thy be on the earth. So, the first thing I want you to notice is the relationship to his brother. And what fueled his fire? It wasn't uh, you know, some we always have this tendency to want to blame others for what we're doing or for our disobedience or for our falling short. And then we will lash out at though at others putting the blame on them. Okay? Now, who holds the responsibility? Of course, Cain holds the responsibility for what offering he brought to the Father. His relationship to the Father. And it was impacted because his brother brought a better offering than him. So it did something to his spirit. Now, I don't know. Because I can't reach back in your past and, and for who whoever this message is for and tell you who did what to you in the past. But you you got some things you need to address from the past because that past that you have not dealt with is acting as a ship anchor holding you in a place that you can't move forward. And you standing in front of that tree and rock, and you can't even move. You haven't even started to go in circles. All you see is the tree and rock. That's it. So, remember, part of the problem is, how can you say that you love Elohim, who you can't see, when you got your brother who you can see, and you don't even love him? You treat him less than a brother or a sister. Now, I want you to notice 
that the action, your action has caused a curse. Let's be honest. Because the scripture is true. Let every let Elohim be true and every man a liar. The scripture is true. Your actions cause the curse upon you. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Um, Maury uh, Lamad did an excellent job yesterday in the Parsha going over Deuteronomy 28. So if you haven't looked at that lesson, I would recommend you do it. But notice when it gets to the curse part, it talks about your action. Because you were disobedient. Because you didn't follow. See, you didn't hearken unto his voice. Nobody's responsible for that but you. Okay? And the curse is what causes you to be unfruitful. And it causes you to be a fugitive and a vagabond. So we're going to deal with that. Okay, now let's look at fugitive, nuah. Okay, it's a prime root, it's a verb to waver. But I want you to look at that. There's something here that stands out about fugitive. To go up and down, remove, scatter, sift, to and fro. Let's go back. To and fro. Wander up and down. Now ask yourself, who has this characteristic? Who in scripture has exemplified this character? Okay, and remember, this particular curse starts with an action of disobedience. Okay, look at Job. Or Yo, chapter 1, verse 7. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? They said, Satan answered Yahuwah and said, From going, what? To and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down. Look, did, did you see that? Nuah. To go up and down. To and fro. Wander up, down. This is one of the characteristics of Hasatan. I want you to hold on to that. Because when we get to, a, there's going to be another scripture. And it talks about who you're serving. And you, and you know not. We, we're, going, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to tell you what the father kind of gave me on it. Okay. And look at Job chapter 2 verse 2. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered Yahuwah and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Okay? So, look at Ephesians. I mean, uh, excuse me. Psalms 107 verse 27. They reel to and, fo and fro, and stagger like a drunken man. And I at the, their wits end. <laughs> then Proverbs 21 verse 6. The getting of treasures by the lying of the tongue is vanity. Tossed to and fro of them that seeketh death. Now how do you seek death? Okay. Okay. Remember what's the opposite of death is life. What did he set before you? He set before you two things. You know, either you can live, choose to live, or you can choose to die. So if you want to live, you keep his commandments. But if you certainly want to die, you disobey his commandments. Isn't that what he told them in the garden? The day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. But what did Hasatan do? He mixed another seed, another thought. Another understanding. He appealed to the feelings. He appealed to their emotions. You shall not surely die. For in the day that thou eatest thereof. You shall be like Elohim. Knowing good and evil. Okay. So Ephesians. Chapter 4 verse 14. That we henceforth. 
be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Very interesting. Okay, now let's look at Vagabond. Nude. To wander, flee, disappear, to console. People always want you to console them in their wrong. Okay, from tossing the head in scorn, taunt. Okay, and, and, and you have to see this. Because basically what has happened, when, when all of this starts to take place in your life, you're removed out of the Father's presence. You disappear, you flee. Because nothing that's unrighteous can stand in His presence. Okay, Psalm 69, verse 20. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I look for some to take pity. Oh, my goodness. Let me, everybody wants, you know, if, if a person's not grounded in Scripture, they're always seeking people to side with them in their wrong. To have pity or feel sorry for him. Okay. But there is none. And for comforters. But I found none. In Yermiyahu or Jeremiah. Chapter 4 verse 1. If thou will return O Israel. Saith Yahuwah. Return unto me. If thou will put away thy abominations out of my sight, then shall thou not remove. So, abominations, and that'll be a good study for you to see what's what's what are what does the father consider abominations? Because you no way they're gonna dwell in his presence. Okay, so here's the million dollar question that we are going to address. Why you wander in the wilderness and still going around in circles? So let's go to Numbers 32, verse 13. And Yahuwah's anger was kindled against Israel. He made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of Yahuwah was consumed. Okay? And, we, and we're going we're gonna to look at that a little further. He made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil. So the wandering was to destroy the evil, the ones that did evil from among them. And and I'm definitely I'm definitely liking. Uh, make sure you all observe the comments if you're online. Um, Maury Lamai is giving some very good comment commentary or comments um, about the wandering. It can be from brother to brother, sister to sister, seeking somebody to side with you. But what should our purpose be? Our purpose should be to side with righteousness. I don't side with with um, wrongdoing, evil, something that's not righteous. I side with right. Whatever is righteous, that's what we should be siding with. 
but we want people to side with our opinion, our understanding, our thought, our emotion. And that's what we uh, gravitate to people that are going to do that. But I don't want to gravitate to those. I want to I want to be around people that if I'm in the wrong, tell me I'm in the wrong. Watch for my soul. OK, so. I want you to notice something. We're going to go to uh, Psalms 59. Let them wander up and down for me and grudge if they be not satisfied. So let's go over here to Psalms 59. I thought this was very interesting. Now, I want you to look. This is a Psalm of David. It's by David. Excuse me. Well, is the to the chief musician, Altikoth and Mach Tom of David, when Saul sent and watched the house to kill him. So notice this involves brothers they were supposed to be brothers and even you know they're supposed to be relatives too because remember uh shaul saul gave david his daughter but notice the contention always you know how he viewed uh, Daoud to David was always negative. The first thought was always negative. It was never any, you know, uh, when the people would sing, saying Saul killed a thousand, but David ten thousand, he would take offense. David didn't do anything to him. He hadn't done anything to him. He was actually out there promoting him and doing stuff for the kingdom. And this, I tell you, exists much among our brothers and sisters. So I'm going to read this whole psalm, but I want you to get to perspective when it's talking here. Who the enemy was in this case. Because remember, Shaul sent and they watched the house to kill him. So you have to look at this, a brother. Well, sister has become an enemy. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my Elohim. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O oh, Yahuwah. So, this is important. You haven't done anything to the person, but the person has risen up against you, your brother and sister, without a cause. They run and prepare themselves without fault. Awake to help me, and behold, Thou therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressor, gressors, Selah. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out their mouth Swords are in their, listen to this, I want you to listen. Swords are in their lips. For who say they doth hear? Notice where the sword is. The sword is what in what they're saying. Man, we got too many people that talk. I tell you, but thou, O Yahuwah, shall laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathens in direction. 
Because of his strength, I will wait upon thee. For Elohim is my defense. The Elohim of my mercy shall prevent me. Elohim shall let me see my desire upon my enemies. Slay them not. Lest my people forget, scatter them by thy power, and bring them down, O Yahuwah, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. For cursing and lying which they speak, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be. Let them know that Elohim ruleth in Jacob or Yaakov unto the ends of the earth, Selah. And at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for to eat or food. But it says for meat. And grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the days of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For Elohim is my defense. And the Elohim in the Elohim of my mercy. So, if you want to get a clear picture, you go back and see what David endured. Did he fight back? Because many times when this is for this right here is for some of us. We want to take matters into our own hands and we're going to, we're going to teach that. We're going to teach these people a lesson. I'm going to teach my brother a lesson. They ain't going to, they ain't going to badmouth me and do all this stuff. And I'm not, you know. But what did David do? What did Daoud do? He waited on Yahuwah. And what did Yahuwah did render judgment? Didn't render it what when, when uh, when I he didn't render it asap. He rendered it in his time. So you you have to see this, you know, because we're so ready to fight and be up in arms. But I want you to go back and read this song because this song really deals with relationship with brother and sister. I mean, brothers, brothers, two brothers. They should have been brothers. But that was not so. Really, really look at this. So let's go back to our slides. And, okay. Then Psalms 107, verse 40. He poured out, he poureth contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Okay. So we're still asking the, the million dollar question. Why are you wandering in the wilderness and still going around in circles? Okay. Consider this, Psalms 119, verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So there's a place I want to stay. I don't want to get away from. But notice something is there. My whole heart. Some people are half-hearted. And when you're half-hearted, there's no stability. There's no foundation. 
Some days you're in, some days you're out. You know, I figured this out. I'm all in. You know, I tore up my ticket. There's no return. But some people still holding on to that ticket. Soon as somebody get on their nerves or do something they don't like, they pulling out that ticket and ready to take flight and go somewhere else or take the bus and go somewhere else. Not willing to endure, not willing to do what's righteous in the sight of, of the father, but let their emotions their feelings take over and dominate them. And this can be a definite problem. Okay, Jeremiah 14, verse 10. Thou say of you who unto this people, thus have they loved to wander. My goodness. They have not refrained their feet. Okay, now this is this is okay. What are we supposed to be on? Okay, notice it says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. There is a path, the path of righteousness that we're supposed to be walking on. Okay, but they have not refrained their feet. They have gone off the path. They saw something over in the tree they wanted to touch. They saw something over beside the rock that they wanted to see for themselves. So they get off the path. They love to wander off. They love to wander. But you have to be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of Yahuwah. You can't let nobody take you off your game. You've got to stand up for what's righteous no matter what. No matter who doesn't like you. No matter who persecutes you. Because the righteous way is always the way to go. Now notice what happens. Because they have not refrained their feet. Their feet are quick to shed blood. Okay. And you can shed blood. Not just by murdering somebody. You can take somebody's name. And run it through the mud. You know. You've still done it. You've killed their character. And remember there, there was a, a Torah portion, I believe it was last week, when a man claims that a, a, the girl that uh, the maiden or the virgin, the betula was given to him was not a virgin. And he went out with his mouth saying that she's not a virgin. And, the, you, you know, I, you gave this to me and I, and I thought she was a virgin. Then the parents bring the proof of her virginity and guess what happens to him he has to compensate the father he's given stripes in other words he's beaten and then he can't divorce her his whole life okay let's finish the verse therefore if Yahuwah does not accept them he will now remember their iniquities, iniquity, and visit their sins. So you can be a wanderer if you want. You can, you know, wander off the path. Don't restrain your feet. Keep your feet on the path. You can do that if you want to. But rest assured, he will remember your, your iniquity and visit your sin. Okay, Amos. Chapter 8, verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro 
to seek the word of Yahuwah and shall not find it. Because you have to seek it with the right heart. There cannot be malicious intent. Let's keep going. A million dollar question. Why are you wandering or wandering in the wilderness and still going around in circles? Numbers 14 verse 34. After the number of days in which you searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities. Even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. Okay, so we got to look at Hebrews. We got to go to Hebrews. This is going to be a little reading. So, bear along with me. But I, I want you to pay close attention. And I'll emphasize where necessary. Okay. Therefore, set apart brothers, you who share the heavenly calling, considered Yahusha, the apostles and high priests of their confession, apostle, high priest of their confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Musha, Moses also was faithful in all Elohim's house. For Yahusha had been counted worthy of more esteem than Moses, as much as, as much more esteem as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by somebody, but the builder of all things is Elohim. Now Moses was faithful in all of Elohim's house as a servant. To testify to the things which were spoken later. But Mashiach or Messiah is faithful over Elohim's house as a son. And we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting and our hope. Therefore, as the set apart spirit says, today... If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. Well, you know, the King James will say the provocation. On the day of testing in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Okay. So. The testing is designed to walk out the unbelief in you. If you will let the process, if you will let the process work through you. But it only works if you submit. Otherwise, you will die in your sin. Therefore was I provoked with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So if they don't enter the rest, they will continue to wander. Wander until they die off. That's what they did. Those that sinned, they did not enter into his rest. Take care, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living Elohim. Let me read that again. Take care, brothers. Lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart 
leading you to fall away from the living Elohim. But exalt one another every day as long as it is today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Mashiach, or Messiah, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. So, if you know this message is speaking to you about wandering, don't convince yourself, oh, he, he's talking about someone else. If it, if it touched your heart, if you felt the Father moving, then accept, hey, this is me, I need to get fixed. I need to get this unbelief out of me. I need to get this fixed so I can do what's righteous. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to mix seeds. You're going to mix the seed of the Father, the tree of life, with the seed of the, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? My goodness. For who were those who heard? They heard the, they heard the same thing that uh, Yahusha, Joshua, and Caleb heard, yet rebelled. Was it not all those who left Egypt, led by Moshe, and with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? whose body fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? Remember, the curse come through disobedience. So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Look at that unbelief to hear see unbelief you heard what he said but yet and still you refuse to act on it you refuse to implement it into your life you refuse to follow it unbelief is not when you don't hear something he's talking about they heard didn't they they heard the same thing. Look look at this. For who were those who heard? See, look at that. Who heard and yet rebelled. So unbelief is when you hear, but you still rebel. You still don't follow. But let's keep it moving. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach. For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed entered that rest as he has said. As I have sworn in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in the passage, he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remaineth for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appointed a certain day, today saying, through David, as long afterwards, 
in the words already quoted today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts for if Yahusha or Joshua had given them rest Elohim would not have spoken of another day later on so then there remained a Shabbat or Sabbath rest for the people of Elohim for whoever has entered Elohim's rest has also rested from his works as Elohim did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of what? Disobedience. For the word of Elohim is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of the soul and the spirit of joint and of marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This is before the manifestation of the action. So the word of Elohim is before the action. It's discerning the thought and the intents of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eye of him to whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has, pa who has passed through the heavens, Yahusha, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we might receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So, that right there gave us our answer. Why are you wandering in the wilderness and still going around in circles? Quite simple. Unbelief and disobedience. You've got to change that you've got to substitute the unbelief you got to get some faith with works and you got to get some obedience you've got to swallow your pride humble yourself because you've heard the word of Elohim you know what the word of Elohim says but you refuse to follow that's going to be hard path that's why the scripture says in Proverbs the way of a transgressor is hard you've got to humble yourself you've got to accept the punishments that he dish out for correction and you've got to walk in obedience there is no way around this if you don't do that you will not make it just like the people in the wilderness that tempted him ten times. The forefathers that brought back the evil report. They didn't make it. Only two made it. So if you think Elohim is playing, you keep on plucking his strings. You're going to find out how much he plays. This is no game. You're playing with eternity, your soul. This is the message he required me to deliver. And we're about finished. Deuteronomy 11, verse 27. A blessing if you obey the commandments of Yahuwah Elohim which I command you this day, a curse, if you will not obey the commandments 
of Yahuwah your Elohim, but turn aside out of the way which I command you to go this day to go after other mighty ones or gods which you have not known. See, what what the father begin to um now maybe some say this might you can't apply this to the scripture but this is what he was giving me they are patterns of other deities or mighty ones messengers that want to be that wanted to be worshiped and served just like the father And those patterns, you're following those same patterns that they did. That made them an enemy to the Father. And they're going to receive their punishment. So you're going after them and you don't even know it. You're doing the same thing they did. Because remember, there are only two seeds. The word of Elohim, that seed, and the seed of the serpent, Hasatan seed. So if you're not serving and following the Father's pattern, what pattern are you serving? What pattern are you following? There's only one other pattern, and those are of the mighty ones that he told you you should not have no other mighty ones before you following their same pattern and you don't even know it just something for you to consider first samuel 15 22 and samuel said have yahuwah as delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of yahuwah behold to obey is better than sacrifice so you want to do something in taking a, a ram and a goat? Obey. To hearken, to listen. Than the fat of rams. So I have done what I have been assigned to do. Take heed. Warning. You have been warned. And don't get me wrong, I, I have no delight. And the Father has no delight in having to deliver messages like this. But he, there, there has to go forth a warning. And if you don't take heed, then after this warning, destruction comes. Things start to fall apart. Your life begins to fall apart and become... Just as Deuteronomy 28 described, because of disobedience, because you refuse to believe and follow what's written in the word of Elohim. So I want to pray. My prayer is that repentance will come upon you. Repentance will overwhelm you. Repentance will be upon you like a, like a garment that you weep and as Maury just put in the chat who is delight is in obedience so my prayer is that you would be obedient let's pray Mr. Bacar because this this is serious we have brothers and sisters that are right on the brink they don't even know it and things are getting ready to fall apart because they refuse. They haven't seen anything come to their house yet. That uh, when I say haven't seen, the things that have touched them are, are small in comparison to what is coming. They've only had a thunderstorm, the hurricane and tornado is on the way if repentance is not sought. Father, in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, my heart weeps for those, Father. I ask you to 
Let your will be done. I pray, Father, that your word would go forth as you have spoken. Father, whatever you have to do to turn them, I pray that you would do it. I pray that you would show them signs that they would see. I pray that you would send another witness to them so they can hear. So that we know, Father, we have spoken everything possible. And that when these things come, we've done all that we can do. I leave them in your hands. I pray, Father, that you would awaken them, cause them to repent, cause them, Father, their heart to be broken, their spirit to be contrite. In the name of Shiach Yahusha, cause them to have dreams, let them see visions of what the future holds for them if they don't repent. Send every sign necessary. And Father, I pray that those of us that are on this path, that we will continue to walk in obedience, that we will continue to do the things that are righteous and discern um, the righteous in others and be able to keep ourselves in line through the word of Elohim as our guide. I give you praise, Father. And I thank you, Father. That whoever this is for, that you will speak to their heart right now. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Because you did not have to wake me up and even say anything. And I give you praise now. In the name of Shiach Yahusha, let your will prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. All righty, Miss Bukai, I love you all. Appreciate you. Let's, uh, we'll just go over a few little things here. Now, speaking of the calendar, within the next uh, two days, I'll have the first mini lesson out. That should be very helpful. Um, the mini lesson should last five to ten minutes, but, Mini lesson will only be on the My Living Branch website. So if you have not um, requested for to be uh, requested an invitation to become a part of the site, you need to go to the site and click join, and it'll ask you to fill out some Im information, and then sends me an invitation. And that simply keeps down the spam, the spam people from, you know, because on the other site, people join and sometimes I get four or five people join that were just spammers every day. So this site has a built in spam prevention. So I review every person that sends an invitation, see what they have to say. <laughs> and then I'll send them the link so that they can join. So I should have that out in a day or so. Um, so be looking for that. And the first thing we're going to address is the common mistakes that we're making with calendars. So I'm excited about that and hopefully it will be, um, it will be very simplistic. I'm not trying to get complicated. The complicated stuff can come later. Um, so be looking for it. Okay, if you need any resources, okay, make sure you visit the Hebrew Resource Center and, you know, get your Dead Sea Scrolls and any other books you might can think of there. And, of course, you can always, uh, if you have children, uh, teaching and training them is very important. You can go Google this uh, Hebrew Ten Commandments on Amazon, Hebrew Passover Story. And you can get it in Kindle version or you can get it in um, hard copy. So let's use this to teach and train our children. Okay, and if you haven't joined our bookmark and witnessing team, uh, and you want to go and fill out uh, the form and it will send a request to me and I'll get the bookmarkers out to you. 
Okay, and if you would like to support us, you can support us. You can go on the website. Um, if you don't want to type this stuff in, you can support us through Cash App, PayPal, or you can send um, donations through the mail. Whatever the Father puts on your heart to keep to support. Okay, and you know this has been a great lesson. Uh, if you haven't viewed the lesson from yesterday by the Path to Yahuwah, make sure you go to their website, check out that lesson. Um, it was a fantastic lesson, great resources. So we just support one another, and you know we we're trying to help people make it in. This is the end goal. If they want to be helped, not everybody wants to be helped. Some people want to do it their own way. But just remember, somebody has to watch for your soul. And if you think you can do it for yourself, have at it. But that's not the model that you see in Scripture. So, all right, Ms. McCaw. And appreciate all of you that I see online. We, we got a pretty good, pretty good uh, support. And always thankful. For everyone that joins us, we have nothing but love for you. Um, you know, you all are a blessing. And, you know, if you have questions or want to reach out to me, just send me an email at info at mylivingbranch.org. And for those that are attending the Shavuot service, that's going to be uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time at our combined location. 5 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. So make sure you come. Let's let's celebrate Shavuot and rejoice before Yahuwah. I'm sure uh, Maury will have a great lesson or whoever he has appointed to teach a lesson, if any, will have a great lesson. So but we always know that the main objective of those days is fellowship and to rejoice before Yahuwah and to enjoy good atmosphere in his presence. Oh, okay. Uh, Maury, is that true or are you joking? I, I see you put Maury Kanan down. I, I can't... Uh, okay, then I... I see a hey hey, so I'm gonna let y'all iron that out on Shabbat, on the Shabbat. All I did was just read what I saw. So <laughs> I pray that we all have a great Shabbat. <laughs> this is Maureen Medad Yahoo saying unto all Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>